ज्ञानतिमलंधस्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मूल ये नस्म श्रीगुर नम वंदेह श्रीगुरोतपदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवाश्चूप सागर जात सह गणरघुनाथ सजीव साध्वत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्ण पाद सह गणलिता श्री विशाखाता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौरत्षे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्माद सेतोन्वयादृत चाथे सुभिज्ञस्वराट तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कवे मुयंतूर तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनम यगो मृषा धाम स्वेन सदा निरस्त कुहक सत्यम परम धीम नारायण नमस्कृत नरच नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर स्वस्तस्तु विश्व खल प्रसीदता ध्यान तो भूता शिव मिथोधिया मनश्च भद्रम भजता दधोक्षज आवेशता नो मतिरप्यहेतुकी The reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto Five, Chapter Nineteen, Verse Number Five. The reading the commentary of Sri Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. <coughs> These are prayers of Sri Hanumanji to Lord Ramchandra in Kimpurush Varsha. And in the previous verse, he has described the. essential characteristic of the lord that he is pure consciousness and free from the material gunas he is peaceful and devoid of any material name and form and is realized by devotees and in this particular verse he said that he comes to the material world to give education and not just for killing the unrighteous people <coughs> otherwise how is it possible that <coughs> he suffered from the separation of sita devi although he is peaceful within himself marte avatar astu he marte sukshma raksho vidharne kevalam vibho कुतोन्नता सदरम प्रस्वात्म सीता धर्म the basic principles of human life so that people can live comfortably or peacefully and the 
peaceful in the society basic order of life because this universe functions on certain principles this like our body also needs a balance if you eat something wrong or you hear something which you don't like then there is a disturbance in your system in the physical system or in the mental state of the inner being so in the same way the universe also needs certain balance and human beings are the practically speaking only one who create imbalance because other species they don't transgress their boundaries they don't have that facility if somebody is a vegetarian then it is a vegetarian if somebody is non vegetarian they non vegetarian human beings they can be both they can be vegetarian non vegetarian vegan vegetarian animals they have their mating period they mate other time they don't mate human beings can do it any time so human beings are the only one who cause disturbance and this choice of this facility is given not to cause disturbance but to actually evolve higher to become conscious of the supreme that's why this facility is given which is not any available to others but if we don't use certain facility then mostly we misuse it and that misuse causes disturbance so when god comes to teach and he teaches that first of all how to maintain balance in the society that is called dharma and then what is the purpose of mate keeping the balance <coughs> simply living here in a balance like that is also useless so the purpose is to attain prema so therefore vishnu chakrati said that there are two types of education he gives one of dharma and one of prema so one is the purvi mansa that is the vedanta there are two basic schools based on the vedas and to attain prema one has to first have dharma otherwise one does not even understand what it is because if there is chaos in life there is no question of knowing something higher sublime superior so that's why purvi mansa has had its role to bring one to level of vedanta so he therefore gave two different meanings to this verse one from the dharma point of view and other from the prema point of view and then he was explaining he he has raised a question himself because he said when he was talking about the second interpretation that sita is the internal potency of the lord and therefore there is no question of separation because it was said here that kutone tha se adaram tah swatma sita kritam yasmani swasya but how can he have vyoga or suffering from sita when it is from I mean, suffering in separation from sita because it is his internal potency is always situated in that so then question was raised in anu sita yah swarup bhutatva katham tad viraha sambhavet so we are saying that sita is his swarup shakti or his internal potency and how can there be separation between him and sita so you cannot separate yourself from your energy Like your conscious being, you cannot take out your consciousness and be away from it. And you don't exist because these two things are ayub siddha; they are inseparable. <coughs> so then he says, "Ochate, that please listen." And this is now he goes into some of the ras philosophy. नास्ति प्रेम से एकमेव परम तत्वम 
चित शक्ति वृत्ति भेदेन महासारेन प्रेमाख्येन अनादित द्विधा विभक्त तिष्ठति सो द बेसिक टीचिंग ऑफ भागवत पुराण ऑल्सो द होल वैदिक लिटरेचर इज दट देर इज ओनली वन एब्सल्यूट रियालिटी एक बुद्धा वदंती दट द ट्रूथ रियालिटी इज ओनली वन सो देर फोर से दट देर इज ओनली वन परम तत्व सो इज पुटिंग वन एब्जेक्टिव परम तत्व मीन्स द अल्टीमेट रियालिटी इज वन विच मीन्स देर आर अदर रियालिटीज विच आर अपरम नॉट सुप्रीम but ultimately there is only one tattva not no two so this is the basic principle from bhagavatam right from the beginning vadanti tat tattva das tattva is jnana madhvaya so there is only advaya jnana or non dual consciousness reality but he says that this one becomes divided to and it has no beginning anadita eva because reality is not something uniform thing without any variety in it reality is ananda or bliss personified anandamaya abhyasat so he is anandamaya and maya means not vikar or transformation but it means full of Ananda. So that Ananda is not that it is just filled with this Ananda and it is just sitting tight in one place. And this Ananda is through reciprocation. It's like when you have energy, then you feel happy by utilizing it. You go for jogging, for tennis, swimming. Take a walk or something. Then you feel it's not that you have energy and you're just sitting happily in one place. So God is Shakti Man or Maha Shakti Man. He has He is potent. He is potent. So He also reciprocates with His own potency. And the thing is that His potency are personalities. He gives or His potency has a form, has a personality. And this is. Not that sometimes the potency has a personality and sometimes it does not have. It's always like that. So although he is one, but then he is two. He and his energy. And energy is also a person. So this is where it becomes complicated. That we are saying one, and then we are saying two. Is it one or is it two? So therefore, he says that. एकम परम तत्व चिशक्तिवृत्ति भेदेन महासारेण प्रेमाख्येन नातीत द्विधा सो हिज पोटेंसी इज कॉल्ड चित शक्ति और कॉन्शियस एनर्जी एंड दिस कॉन्शियस एनर्जी इज अगेन नॉट जस्ट यूनिफॉर्म बट इट हैज लॉट ऑफ वेराइटी इन इट एंड द एसेंस ऑफ दैट एनर्जी इज प्रेम सो एसेंस ऑफ ऑल आर एनर्जी इज एक्चुअली प्रेम बट वट एवर यू डू अल्टीमेटली यू वॉन्ट टू लव Without that, you are not satisfied. Even if you love yourself, so still you want love. Even those who don't believe in so on the Buddhists or God or anything, they also talk of love. It's most amazing thing that Buddhists talking about love. So, <coughs> materialist people they talk of love. Atheist people talk of love. Theist people, of course, talk of love. so love is something where we have a common platform to have a dialogue with everybody because this is actually the essence this is the essence of god or essence of reality this is when i say essence means this is our basic existence we exist because of love when there is no love people commit suicide Why do they commit suicide? Because they don't find any love. If love is there, you give up your life for the sake of love. When love is not there, then you give up your life also. So you can sacrifice your life for love or without love. That means life, which is most dear to us, 
we try to protect it at every cost, we can sacrifice it only for one thing and that is love. That love may be anything, it may be misplaced, it may be love for the country, love for person, love for something. But we are able to sacrifice, so that means love is superior. So existence has a is very important in the sense that we have survival instinct. But why do we want to survive? Survival in itself is not an end. Everybody is trying to survive, nobody wants to die. But survival is for the sake of love. Otherwise we don't want to live. Therefore many times people say that Better I die than living this life. And people are not having good relations or they are dissatisfied. So this actually shows that whether we know it or we don't know it, whether we have deliberated on it or not, but we have this inner yearning for love. And that is because our source is love. All this creation is running because of love. If there is no love, then the parents kill the baby. Because love is there, they take so much trouble. Otherwise, no woman would like to give birth again. Because it's such a headache. <laughs> At least going through experience one, why go through again? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Because love, it does not function on logic. Love is not logical. Mm. That's why they say that love is blind. And love does not follow any rules. It's beyond. Because it is, it is a fact. It is beyond everything. Everything else is below it. So that, that is because our very source, the Param Tattva himself or herself or whatever you want to call, is this love. That's why it says that the essence of that Param Tattva itself, Mahasar, the supreme essence, is Premakya, that is which is called Prema Love. That's why you hear sometimes they say that God is love and love is God. Of course, that is another thing that people have no idea what love means. That is the problem. So he is trying to explain that in brief. Because there are so many other places we have talked about it. So he says that this supreme reality, it, it is always divided in two because for love there have to be two. There is no love in one. That is very boring. It's to be yourself. Even if you love yourself, if you love yourself by leaving the room, you should be happy eternally. Because then you don't need anything. All you want is love and you are loving yourself. But it doesn't work that way. So, <coughs> even God, Ekaki Naramte, even God does not want to be alone. In the Upanishad, he says that he doesn't enjoy alone. So, he, of course, he has power, so he is always two. And so, he always has two. But this two is in one. This is two in one. <laughs> this is the real two-in-one system. <laughs> so he says, Dvidha vibhaktam tishthati. That is always situated, one divided into two. But when we use divided, it seems like one, once upon a time he was not divided and he became divided. This is the limitation of language. So therefore he has to use another word, anadita eva. And this is from the very beginning, or means that it has no beginning. Anadi means beginningless. That it has been always like this. It's not that God is learning by some practice and then he realizes that better I become to, it's more fun. No, it has been like this. So, Hlada Shadashwarya Maya. Keval Hadmayaj. So what are these two divisions? So he is using some technical words now. That God has got 
two types of main energies you talk of chitvritti which is a, just one name when you want to lump all his energies into one then you call them chit shakti or conscious energies or internal potency in this is then they have two divisions in it there are many divisions but two major divisions one is his ashwarya shakti or he has power by which he is supreme he controls whether it is his knowledge his beauty his physical strength mystical powers all this thing is his ashwarya means by seeing which you say wow this is god ashwarya means which makes you wonder which makes you feel that you are small and he is big any power which makes you feel like that that is called ashwarya by which you feel diminished and god or the other person feels supreme that is called ashwarya means majesty so that is his one characteristic and usually people think of god that god means who is very majestic means he is big he is great he is omnipotent omniscient omnipresent all omni so that is actually only one part of him the other part is called lad or just bliss happiness anand so his one form is where he has both of them and then he separates his bliss part which is the prem part and gives another form to it and that's what takes the female form so even in the material world we see that men are more controlling type and female are more loving type at least they are supposed to be <laughs> now, <laughs> now they don't like to be like that <laughs> they are also trying to be like men <laughs> try saying that on Oprah <laughs> what is that? try saying that on the Oprah channel <laughs> TV show <laughs> so but when when we speak of man prototype means controller who wants to control who wants to manage who wants to be supreme that is called man and woman means who is kind loving compassionate and is actually the subject or object of control naturally likes to surrender and serve this is the natural nature of a true prototype woman or the woman psychology to be controlled and to love and to serve to be subdued she is happy with that that is the original female nature so god also exists in these two features in one feature he has of course he does not have only just the controlling feature but also the love part so that is his one that is the male form and then the female form is only the love part that she only knows what is love and is not bothered about controlling this that so that is we have what we have krishna and radha so radha is only his loving potency so she is only just love she is not interested in creating or controlling or doing all these things she is just love and love of course has the features of serving and maintaining and keeping things in order for the pleasure of the lover so therefore it says that these two divisions are hlad shad aishwarya maya and keval kevalam hladmay so hlad is that potency by which god feels happy and he makes others happy that potency is called hlad potency he has three major potencies one is his existential potency by which he exists eternally and makes everything else exist so existence 
Wherever you see existence, that is actually potency of God. So that's how God is pervading into everything. Is everything existence is there because of Him only. Otherwise, it won't function. Everything will crumble. So he, that's why he is called Vishnu, because he enters into everything. That is most important. So that's what Vish, Vishnu is, is provision to enter. It means what? Vishnu. To enter. And then other potency is his potency to know and to be aware and to make others also know. And third is the potency of bliss, happiness, by which he feels happy and makes others happy. So this third potency is the supreme potency of the other two potencies. Because the purpose of existing and purpose of knowing is for the sake of happiness, which is love. They themselves also give some happiness. Existence also gives happiness. Like you have money, you feel happy, I have money. But more happiness when you use it. <laughs> Unless you are a complete miser. <laughs> so same you feel happy by knowing things. But more happiness when you use that knowledge. That is called wisdom. And then third one is the ultimate one. So this is superior, you know, ultimate, topmost. So that is the Hlad man. So therefore it says Prathamam Parmeshwar Akhyam Dutiyam Bhakti Akhyam. The first form is called Parmeshwara or the Supreme Lord. And the male and the second one is called Bhakti. Devotion, love. So these are his two divisions. Punasya tenaiva premna svasya chatasri bhir vritti bhir dvitiyam tattvam chaturdha vibhaktam dasa sakhi pitradi preyas yakhyam So now, because God is, as I said, He has a potency by which He enjoys and gives enjoyment to others. And His enjoyment is not just of one type, uniform. There is a variety in it. And there are four divisions further in it. There are many divisions, but four major. So what he does is that he divides himself in these four ways, his mood. And also the second one gets divided into four ways. So these are the four types of relations which we can have with God, and which also exist in the material world. And these are the servant master relationship, relationship of friendship, and the relationship of paternal, where he becomes the child, and the devotee becomes parent, mother or father. And the third is the lover and beloved, sweetheart. Lover, so the devotee is the beloved, girlfriend, and God becomes the boyfriend. So these are the four ways he enjoys this bliss or this energy called love. These are the four ways that love becomes manifest in different because these two things, which he said Ashwarya and Lad, depending on when there is more Lad, then it takes a feminine form. And when it is a little bit less, then it comes towards the devotee also has some Ashwarya. If he is Ashwarya, then he has to have a male form. So then he has this relationship of servant master. I am servant, he is my master. But I also have a male identity. So there is servant master, mother child, lover lover. What was the fourth one? Friends. Oh, okay. God can also be a friend. So these are the four ways. 
प्रथम से तदेव तत्व से दास्यादि भाव भावी तत्व व्यवस्थापित प्राकृतेशु अपनी जीवेशु यदृच्छा एकादृश भक्ति साधन वत्सु भक्ति परिपाके स्वयं आविर्भूय एक आवेश्य ते भी दासादित्वेन यथाकाल प्राप्त चतुष्क तेन समनुगम्य ते पुनरपि तेन प्रेमना स्थायी भावता प्राप्त स्वशक्त आविर्भाविता भावादी स्वयं रसूपी तदेव तत्वयुगल स्वस्य विषयाश्रय भाव आवेद स्वाधीनीकृत योग वियोगाभ्याम सुख दुखाइत स्वधुर्यमसाधारण पारम आस्वादयत कोपी आनंद चमत्कार तदिना निष्पादते how god manifests so he says that first of all that tatva that reality so dasyadi bhav bhavi tatvam vyavasthapitam he gives this bhav because he is the source of everything so he gives this temperament or this mood of survivorship even in the people of this material world Prakriteshwar. So this that means this experience that when someone feels that I am servant of God, this is not something which you can conceive yourself. It's not something which you can manufacture yourself. It actually comes from God. It is by His grace that someone feels. Because once you get this feeling, it is not that one day you feel. Because many times people like. Talk all kinds of things. If you go on internet, all types of talk. You know, I used to feel like a friend, but now I feel like this. And it's not a question of your feeling or anything like that. It is actually coming. So therefore, he uses the word. Very interesting word. He says, "Dasyadi bhav bhavi tattum vyavasthapt." That this bhav, this mood, this temperament is in him, and then. person here the practicing devotee gets bhavit or imbued by that mood from him so it is coming from the ultimate source itself so prakriti swapi jeevesu yadrichya this is a very again word yadrichya problematic word <coughs> by chance by fate by how does it happen desire. so how does it happen there is one word for that in sanskrit and you have to just tolerate this word <laughs> <laughs> and that word is called yadrichcha yadrichcha means somehow or other <laughs> <laughs> means really no <laughs> logical explanation why it happens ah. and there's also daiva that's another irritating word daiva yeah right. so another way of it is yadrichcha yadrishi ichcha means bhagavat ichcha that it happens by the will of god himself mm. that god wills that somebody should get dasya bhav so then somebody gets that Or God wills that somebody should get sakya, friend, friendship mood. Then he gets. Mm. So of course it happens through a devotee. It's not that God is just sitting there and willing. It's a more condensed form. He is talking. The detailed thing that it happens by the grace of a living devotee. You come in contact with a living devotee who has that mood, and from that. Another person gets it, like a virus, mm-hmm. so contagious disease. <laughs> you come in contact, and then you get sick because of that. So this contagious disease begins from God only, and it comes down by the parampara, one after another. 
somebody grabs it, then someone else, then someone else, then someone else, then you get it. So that is called, that is the meaning of parampara. Means a chain. Hmm. There has to be a link. You cannot just, virus cannot just jump from one and you come in contact with somebody who does not have it, you can't get it. You have to come in contact with somebody who has it. So that's how it comes. So, yeah, that is the meaning of Yadrichaya. Yadrichaya, Yetadrisha, Bhakti Sadhan Vatsu, Bhakti Paripake, Swami Mahavir So those who are practicing the path of Bhakti Yoga, those who are doing Bhakti Sadhana, so then it, it is given to them. Actually that's how they do Bhakti Sadhana. And then the, when this Bhakti becomes mature, because first you are practicing it, and then it matures. So then he says, Bhakti Paripake Svayam Avir Bhuga Eta Chatuskam Aveshya Tepi Dasadi Tvena Yatha Kalam Prapti Chatuskena Tvena Svayam Gamyate So then mature means that this thing becomes manifest in these four ways. And then all these people, they get this bhav and then this bhav becomes stable. Punarapi tenaiva premna sthai bhav tam prapti. So that is called sthai bhav. Means become this permanent mood of that devotee. Now it cannot be changed. Hmm. Then eternally in this life and hence after that is how he or she will relate with God. So, Svashaktya eva avir bhavita abhir vibhavadi bhi svam rasrupi kritya tadeva tatyugulam svasya vishayashri bhav bhavitam kritpa. So, now after he, the devotee has got that bhav, sthai bhav, and God also has the corresponding mood because he relates. If the person has got the mood of servitorship, then Lord will deal with him as if he is the Lord. If he has got the mood of friend, then he will also deal with him as a friend, not let as Lord or God or anything, just like a friend. So then the dealing begins between God and the devotee. The relationship starts. And then it, this bhakti, this transforms into rasa. With a combination of vishaya and ashraya. So the devotee becomes ashraya becomes the subject of this love or devotion or relationship and God becomes the object and then they reciprocate with each other and this reciprocation then gives immense bliss because happiness comes when you have a relationship with somebody and that person acts according to the relation. If you have a mother or a father, and your mother is actually acting what a mother is supposed to do towards the son, and the son is also acting and exactly with what a son is supposed to do with the mother, then this is very blissful. Hmm. So that is called rasa. This love takes a wave form, which just completely drowns your heart in ecstasy. And that's when person becomes so blissful that all types of symptoms become manifest on his body, on her body, your hair stand on the end, you have tears in your eyes, you become stunned, you cannot move, or you even fall down in ecstasy. You lose external awareness completely becomes so much absorbed in it. So that is testing that rasa. So that's what he is describing here. That Tasya Vishaya Ashrai Bhav Bhavitam Kritva Swadhini Kritya Yoga Vyoga Bhyam Swadukhaita Sukhadukhaita So then Lord then he releases this relationship Sometimes he is with the devotee and sometimes he creates separation. Because the whole talk started 
how the name can be separation from C can be separation. So he is explaining because he has to go back and explain the whole principle behind it in short. How does it happen? So he says that sukha dukhaitam sva madhuryam asadharanam param ashvadayata kopi anand chamatkare tadvinam inspired. So then this is called sweetness, this relationship. So in the case of Lord and the devotee, there is no question that they don't behave or function according to the relation because their mood is exactly like that. They don't have any other ego. Here in the material world what happens that we have all kinds of egos. It's not only one. So I have I'm living in the world, I'm also a friend of somebody and I'm boss in the office. I'm also son to my mother. So when I come home, actually I should just be son to my mother. But I don't do that. I'm still thinking, well, I am the CEO of this company. So you still carry that bhav and that's what creates the friction. When you are a boyfriend and girlfriend, then if you simply have that ego of boyfriend and girlfriend, no problem, you function accordingly. But then you, you bring out your other ego and then the friction comes and then there is no rasa, there is no pleasure coming out of this relationship, there is no happiness and then there is only distaste instead of taste. Rasa means taste. So you are just tasting it, you are enjoying it more and more, more and more. And this, since this rasa is not something which fills your stomach and say, okay, I had enough of it. No, it, your, your desire to have it goes on increasing. It's something like not only taste which you are tasting, but also increasing your appetite simultaneously. So your desire to have it increases all the time. Pratipadam Purnamrit Ashwadam. At every step, you feel completely full and yet you think I want more. So that is the nature of this love. And there is no looking back in it or something else. You become so absorbed, so completely satisfied in it and there is nothing else which matters for you. So therefore he says that Kopi Ananda Chamatkar. There is Ananda and there is Chamatkar. Chamatkar is another word. What will be the good translation for Chamatkar? Surprise, astonishment. Some kind of. You are just astonished all the time. My God, oh my God. <laughs> Astounded. No, yeah. it's not. It's, it's actually these words are just there to give you an idea. Really, really you have to experience it. And when you put your experience into the words, it becomes very limited. There are no words to explain it. So he's just saying, Anand Chamatkar, that you are blissful and astounded, surprised, amazed. And you remain in that state all the time. So that is what it that is what God comes to show to people. Because here people nobody knows this. So he comes to give an idea of it and says that come on, why don't waste your time? I'm I'm ready to give this to you, but you, you should desire it. So that is the shiksha, that is the education. And two types of education. So generally we think of commandments, that is the dharma. You know, don't steal, thou shalt not kill, whatever, what are the ten commandments. So that commandment is dharma, but commandment for what? So that is prema. So that is the real purpose. And the hidden purpose, mostly people think God come, let us come, let us come to establish dharma. So this is the ananda chamatkar, eva tadvidam nispandite. So he says those who know this, this is what they get. And atadvidam tu keshanchit 
रामकृष्णादीनामेतावत दुखम अनिर्वाच्यम केशाचिद जीव प्रदर्शनाए अनुकृत व्यामोह सो इस दोज हू नो दिस दे अंडरस्टैंड वाय राम वॉज क्राइंग वाय सीता वॉज सपरेट फ्रॉम हिम एंड अतदविदाम मीन्स दोज हू डू नॉट नो इट हू डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड इट वट डू दिस इस इज और even lord rama has to suffer like this and krishna can't explain why it is so this atadvidam means those who do not know but they are still dharmic type they are pious people on mm-hmm. god believing in god those who don't believe them say it's all nonsense they say he is god look at him he is crying so they will talk like that so he says एतावत दुखम अनिर्वाच्यम से केशांचित जीव प्रदर्शनाय अनुकृतम सो इस इज दे रिमेन बिविल रेड दिस इज ऑल दिस इज जस्ट टू टीच टू अस व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन यू फील सेपरेशन फ्रॉम योर वाइफ एंड दैट यू डोंट गेट मैरिड दैट्स व्हाट पीपल डू दिस दे दे नो गेट मैरिड सो दे नो सेपरेशन So he says that that's how they remain bewildered, thinking like that. So this is a very nice explanation of this verse. Marthya avtaras tu ya marthya shikshan, raksho vidhayam kevalam vipo, kutol nithasya adhanamta svaratmana, svita kritani vishnani shvaras. So we'll stop here. If anybody has any question or comment to make. the nature of arjuna and krishna's relationship friends there was friendship sakha so for the, the 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 initial attraction that one has um in, in any of these paths is that's a gift of the guru it's actually not it's a complete gift yeah i mean one gets it and the fact that we meet this guru and not that guru is that is yet another, another act of grace or purva janma samskar or something like that yeah, if one has purjan samskar then they will lead one to such a person if there are no samskar then that is that's just a pure gift just just a reaction and then that's it for all eternity yeah can't change well you can't change unless i mean before you get thai how you can change but once you get thai now then is thai but actually once you get your shraddha you really speaking you don't change so initially this That's is what is shown in chaitanya charitamrita in the story of anupam brother of rupa swami sanatan goswami they tried to mm-hmm. twist his right. brain yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. he cried all night and mm-hmm. said please just forgive me <clears throat> so initially this is going on in the in the prakritic mind and that becomes transformed into a stay up right. and then after this but then after this death then one takes a swoop up with right. the same with this with this which also has a form which has that stay up as part of its yeah because uh, you see even in the material world our body is based on our bhav mm-hmm. and so krishna says that yam yam vapi smaran bhavam he specifically uses the word bhav is not actually saying whatever thought you have people think usually translate it like mm-hmm. that but actually he is saying bhav mood nimiyam vapi smaran bhav dasthe ante kalivam tam tam eviti konte again he uses the word bhav sada tad bhav bhavit so what is means what is your predominant bhav because he says sada tad bhav bhav imbued with that bhava no this is material that gives you this physical body so our physical body is actually is like what they call solidification of the bhava you mm-hmm. have so that's thai bhava because it is in devotion so then it will give you that devotional body and that body is conscious so it will naturally function according to that bhava
so the, the, the type of relationship you have with God is once you have it, it follows through your incarnation? Or is it different for each other? Once you have this perfection, then you don't take another body. You, you go and live with God in the spiritual world, in the spiritual body. Mm. And you are eternally with God, having that eternal relationship, and then you don't. Okay. Then you don't die. You don't change your body, become, don't become old or sick or any of these things. Unless it is part of relationship. Have I passed the Latvian in Golo? Not in Golo, but in Vrindavan there. Yeah. This idea that, you know, we have, because we're parts of parts, right? Ankshas of Ishwara. And if Ishwara is praying, then that suggests that the Anksha by his sat and chit. Because those are qualities. So might that also suggest that the praying is the praying the ananda, what the Vedantins would say is the ananda aspect? No, but actually we are not part of that God, we are part of Paramatma's Tatastha mm. Shakti. So then that's not praying. Mm. So that's why we don't have it. This whole idea that we have dormant love inside. Is it, is it? Okay. That is the misconception. So we do have dormant, do we have dormant ananda? No, we don't, we would don't say. have anything dormant. We don't, would say, right? Ananda Mahavyasa, that the nature of... No, we, we translate ananda maya there is for Brahman. Yeah. Brahman is ananda maya, abhyasa, because repeatedly it is a satyam jnanama, anandam brahma, anand brahma titi vyajanat. It's not for the jiva. No it's not describing the living being, it is describing the Supreme Being. This Anandamaya Abhyasa, the description of Brahman, because this is how it starts. So then we would disagree with the Vedantins who say that Ananda is the nature of the Atman. Yeah, we disagree. And we would agree with Sankhya and Yoga. Yeah. Who says it's just sudden shit. Right. Except that Sankhya does not accept Karthatva, Bhaktivita and all this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.